Okay guys, hello! And I've got a surprise for you, because I've got my 3DS all hooked up with the capture card, so fingers crossed when I press this now it's going to switch over and you'll actually be able to see what I can see on here, so here we go. There it is! And it's all real time as well. And it's also extremely loud. How's that? That should sound a bit better. So hey, how is everyone? I'm really excited to do this. I've had this 3DS with a capture card for a while now, and I've not really put it to use until now, so... Um, basically, I've got 15 games here that I want to play. I don't know how many we'll actually get through tonight, but... Um, yeah, I want to play through these at some point to record footage for my upcoming video. And as you can see on the wall behind me, if I make it full screen, full screen cam. There you go. And if I get it to focus on the wall instead of me. There you go. I've got all my 3DS games out on the wall there for the video as well. And that actually took me a lot longer to put together than you think it might. There was a lot of like t those two layers there. They're actually stacked up using Game Boy games, which is uh, pretty funny. We can start with Cave Story if you want. Am I back in focus? Yeah, let's Let's start with Cave Story. Um, I've played it a little bit. There's there's a box. I actually picked this one up at the Birmingham Gaming Market a few months ago. So really happy to finally have this. This is one that I was actually looking for for a long time as well. And although you guys can't see, it does have a really nice 3D effect. Which is was one of the main selling points, obviously, for Cave Story 3D. Um, but the game itself is really good too. Let me know whether that looks and sounds okay. Like I said, this is my first time ever streaming from the 3DS to the PC, so... Hopefully... Looks like the USB port's a little bit loose. Should be better. I have a lot of cables dangling down here. Hopefully that's fixed it. Okay. I think we're ready, so uh, I'll start a new game so we can start it from the beginning. Both the video and audio are great, that's fantastic. It is quite a dark game, I wonder whether I can turn the... Oh, it's already on Brightness 5 anyway, so it is just quite a dark game in general. Let's see uh, whether I can like use a filter to brighten it a bit. Bear with me one second. Color correction. Whoa, too much. That's a bit better. There we go. Should be able to see it a little bit better now. Hey, hello. Welcome to my 3DS stream. I'll be looking down a lot because I'm obviously looking at it on the 3DS. So, um, yeah, this is Cave Story 3D. Like we just said, a game I've been looking forward to for a long time. I think if you've played the original, it's basically exactly the same, like in terms of layout. If you're reading this, please answer. So, Cave Story, for anyone that doesn't know, was... Um, yeah, press down to activate save points and collect items to, and enter doors. It was basically like one of the first ever proper indie games. It was made by a Japanese developer in 2004, I believe. And this intro bit, you have to be really careful. Um, because obviously you don't have any powers or anything. There you go. How Metroid is that as well? Uh, I'm not planning to play all of them today, but... I have this stack that I need to record. I'll probably record some off stream, but these are the these are the ones that I'm doing for my top 15 video. And then the wall behind me back there, that's um, kind of the backdrop for the video. And I'm also planning to do a Hidden Gems one afterwards as well. And I'm hoping to get all of that recorded, both videos, before Wednesday next week, because I'm going away uh, with work for most of next week. So I want to have something to edit in the hotel while I'm there. 
So fingers crossed I can get a lot of really good footage uh, that I can use to edit along the way. So yeah, that reminds me actually, while we're doing this, I should also be recording these through OBS as well. Hopefully that doesn't Hopefully that doesn't kill the computer trying to stream, record, and also use the 3DS capture software at the same time. But it seems okay. Hey, editors here! Finally managed to catch one live! Fantastic! And we got the first item there, the Polar Star. And then we're going to go back and see what's going on. Hey, Tom Sutton's here as well! And Jez, Jezus, Jezus underscore colon. Hello, how's everyone doing tonight? And what are some of your favourite 3DS games as well? That'd be interesting to know. I did also just realise that the um, the chat is going off the side of that box a little bit. I've not used this layout before. I'm just testing something new for this one, so. There we go. Squeeze you guys into that little box there. And we're going to play a little bit of Cave Story, and then I've got a bunch of other games here that I want to go through and play. I know Twitch says that we're actually playing uh, Kid Icarus Uprising, so maybe we'll play this next, and then Twitch won't be completely lying. And I've also got New Super Mario Bros. 2 here as well. And what else might be fun to do on stream? Maybe some... Let's see, I'm going to pick out the games that we're actually going to play today. Maybe these two. So some Sega Classics 3D and maybe some Smash Bros for 3DS as well. Wow, you've only got one game for the 3DS. That's, that's crazy. I'm about... I don't even know how many I've got. Have a look on the wall behind me. I was lining them all up earlier for the background for my video. If it'll focus, there you go. And there's another stack that I've got separately as well, which is going to be for my Hidden Gems episode. Which is going to be the week after. Fingers crossed. Yeah, too many. Too many. Um, so we've got a gun now anyway. Hooray! Now we can actually make some progress and kill these bats. And that frog thing down there as well. How's the sound? That sound effect's not too loud, is it? This is such a good game. It, get, it gets really good later on. There's loads of really unique weapons and different environments and things. And I think this might also include the original game as well, so we'll see whether that's actually part of this collection. But this version of the game was made specifically for the 3DS. Um, some people complained that it's a bit too dark. Uh, but I like it, and it controls really well. But one of the best features, um, unfortunately, is something that you won't be able to see. But the 3DS actually has a 3D effect, so you can use that slider to increase the 3D depth. You can kind of see. You can kind of see how it works. In fact, I think on the capture software that I'm using, if I do it like that... Oh no, it didn't work. Let's try that. Okay, there you go. You can kind of see how the effect works. So that's what it looks like on to both eyes. So if you do it kind of fast like that, you can kind of see. You can kind of see the depth to it. But anyway, let's turn that off. Hey, new follower. Thank you to... Beggy... Beggy Siege? Beach, Beach Siege? How do I say that? Let me know if you're there in the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be able to play some 3DS games. I've had the capture card for a while, but I've never really had a chance to uh, properly go and use it, so... Anyway. Give me the key, no way. Are you pretending? Are you trying to protect that Sue girl? She's an outsider. Sue's a good person. I wouldn't betray Sue. Oh yeah, I should turn the 3D off. Yay, and another follower. Thank you. 
Uh, where, where are we up to? Uh, next time the Doctor shows up, someone else will be taken away. There was a few followers, actually, that followed before I was live as well, so if anyone's watching, uh, LL Prod, Smack Silver, oh my god, we got another one. Grendel 100, Tronimon GB, Dan 3Y123456, Crazy K619. Sounds like I'm just making these up because you guys can't see them. <laughs> uh, anyway, just hand over the key. <laughs> Boomf. Oh, I love this music. They did a great remix of it for the 3DS too. What? You're not an enemy? I thought you were one of them. My name is King. I am the number one in this village. Though I say number one, it doesn't really mean much. There's only six of us left in the village. Well, really, including Sue at seven. Well, she's not one of us, she's just an outsider who came into the village. Now, this is where I always end up getting lost in this game, so bear with me for a second. It's kind of difficult to figure out where you need to go next. Yeah, looking forward to my 3DS videos, that's good. I've been meaning to do them for a long time, but I've just never got around to it. Like, I've been planning this for over a year now, and I slowly keep buying more and more games, and I feel like I've finally got enough games now to actually do a proper video and do the system justice. Because there was a lot that I'd never played for it. There's still a lot more that I want to get as well. Jeez, you scared me. Uh, she lives together with Tokoro. The girl's a real cutie. She must be looking for flying dragons. Wonder if there is such a thing. So this is like the main hub village, and you come back here like throughout the adventure. Um, and I already can't remember where we need to go. Let's, let's try in here. It does open up later into sort of different different levels and obviously you can tell that you're supposed to come back to places throughout the game to sort of unlock different paths forward so let's keep going around and talk to people loon floon first time catching you live hey thanks for joining appreciate that i know a lot of people have struggled to catch me live so maybe i'll try and mix up some of the times when we go live as well in the days Let's try and get some more new people in. And Mick Manx here as well. Hey, it's going well, thanks. I've been busy preparing, as you can see behind me, for my 3DS video, so I thought I would come here and play some games for it and record some footage at the same time. And hopefully we can actually get far enough into Cave Story to actually show you what the gameplay is like, because it's a really fun game. The original is one of the absolute classics in like uh, indie game history. And then they remade it with help from Nicholas in 2011, 2012, something like that. This is a farm where we grew flowers. My job is to protect the farm. Not the red flowers, I free the red flower. Uh, blood pressure skyrockets and we'll die in an instant. On this farm, we don't grow red flowers. Good. Why would you want to grow them? Instant death. There's a, a tank there. Listen to that Metroid style. Obviously, the game was heavily inspired by classic Metroid. Yeah, Cave Story's awesome. This 3D version is fantastic too. Like I was saying just now, you can't see the 3D, but the 3D in the game actually looks really good. Right. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but you see the way the ground's like moving to the side there. When I'm pushing it up and it moves, it's actually coming out of the screen, like towards me. There's not many 3DS games that go that way, a lot of them go into the screen. So the fact that this one comes out as well as going in, it is a really, really nice effect. And it is a shame that I can't show you guys that. There's the there's a box for it, Cave Story 3D. It's really hard to find, unfortunately. It's taken me a long time to track that down. To track down the copy. And I believe it is fairly expensive, unfortunately. And I also don't know where I'm meant to be going. I know there's another path there if I'm careful. Apparently that isn't a platform. Let's see if we can get it there. 
Or it might be that you need to go back back the way you just came actually. Okay, maybe. There's something up there. Yeah, we got a map. There we go. Now you can see the, the bottom screen there, which is here, just off the corner. It's great that the 3DS capture is actually working properly. Side scroll was really shiny on 3D with the 3D effect. Yeah, they do. They look really nice. Like um, another game that I'm including in my top list. I probably won't have time for it in this stream, but Shantae and the Pirates Curse as well. The 3DS version of that looks incredible. Like easily the best version of that game. NCS072, thank you for the follow. Right, so now we have the map. Now we can try and figure out where to go next. I really, really miss the 3D effect. I was so sad when they didn't include it on the Switch. I know a lot of people were like, eh, it doesn't really add anything to the games, but I think it does. I think it adds a lot. <laughs> yeah, my, my curse hasn't taken effect just yet. Somehow. Something happened just then on Twitch. I heard the Sonic thing. I don't know whether you guys can hear that, actually. I've got it set up so it uh, plays a tone whenever someone follows or subscribes or anything like that. Sue? Yeah, Sue, that cute girl who's always hiding inside Arthur's house. She recently came to Mimag Mimiga? Mimaga? I never know how to pronounce that. Mimaga Village. She fell into the reservoir there. I don't think she's very fond of us. It seems like she hates everyone in the village, but see, she's a Mimaga, same as the rest of us. There's something down there. Something shines brightly. Obtain the silver locket. Oh, that's good, you can hear it. Yeah, Cave Story is like one of the very first like found in indie games. Well, I guess you would call it a doujin game. As it was as it was from Japan, part of the doujin circle. And technically, if you're talking about doujin games, they go way back, like to the eighties. And things like the uh, the Sharp X sixty eight thousand computer and stuff like that and the MSX. I would love to do a video on the indie scene in Japan, but um, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Ah, uh, Toriko, don't underestimate me. Right, so where am I supposed to be going now? I picked up a locket. Might need to go up to the top of the map, maybe. Let's see what's in here. You jerk. Wow, oh, help me, help me. You're not the doctor. Sorry about that. The doctor's such a cruel and evil person. He shows up in the village and kidnaps Mimiga. Mimiga? I'm going to call it Mimiga. And even killing someone. The doctor, he killed my older brother. Ah, that pendant. He picked it up for me. Sue gave it to me. But I don't want it anymore. It keeps... King gets bent out of shape when Sue and I get along. Please keep it. Oh, now we get to see Balrog, I think. Yep, the weird poster, TV, enemy. There's no use hiding from me. I've got the nose of a clever Harrier. Indeed. Such a weird game. Yes, he has the nose and brain of a dog. You're with the Doctor. You must be Sue. The Great Doctor has summoned you. Come along with me. Huh? But I'm not Sue. Oh no. Fight that handbag. Yeah, you can get doujin games as well. It basically means just fan creation. Games, manga, I guess, anime to an extent. Not that many people actually try and make their own fan anime. Although that's where, um, oh, what's his name now? The guy who did your name, five centimeters per second, stuff like that. Oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, yeah, he's his first film, feature film, was actually all done by himself in Photoshop, which is insane. I can't remember what that's called, though. Man, I haven't watched anime in so long. Yeah, we can fight him with a pea shooter. First boss fight. Fight the weird TV toaster handbag. He's not really doing much. Ah. Oh no, I'm nearly dead. Yeah, got him. 
first try. I'll remember this. Oh, Voices of a Distant Star, that's the film I was thinking about. The film that he made all on his own. It's a really good film as well. Really emotional. I really enjoyed it. I think that came in like 2002, 2001 or two. So, again, I have no idea where to go next. Oh yeah, Makoto Shinkai, that's the thing. Yeah. I know he's got another film coming out this year at some point as well. Which will be good. Although I was kind of like, I didn't really know what to think about weathering with you, really. I don't know whether I liked it or not, it seemed a little bit all over the place. Yeah, it's crazy. He made, not just that he made it all by himself, but the fact that he made it in Photoshop, like frame by frame, is just insane. It's a really good film, though. Definitely recommend watching it. And you can tell, like, by by the time he started making Place Promised in the early days, he, like, had a proper team. That film's amazing as well. It made me want to watch it again, though. I think I'm going the wrong way. Hey, evening. Uh, who is it? Sly Fox Gemini. Sky Fox Gemini. Sorry. Hello. How are you? I don't think I've pronounced anyone's names right so far. No, where am I meant to be going? I'll be saying that a lot. It took you nine months to make a short film in college, and that was only three minutes. Yeah, I don't know how we managed it. It probably took years, like... Um, Who's the guy who made Wallace and Gromit? Didn't that take like 10 years to make or something insane like that? All frame by frame. Where am I meant to go? Anyone who's played... Anyone who's played Cave Story? Where the hell am I supposed to go? Oh my god, Plunderbus. Wow, that brings back memories. There's still a video on, on YouTube about Plunderbus. <laughs> that first trailer that we put together. Where am I meant to go? Was that back into the graveyard? I think I've already been there. Let's see if he has anything new to say. I would love to try and do some animations. Cave Story is a classic. Yeah, such a good game. I'm just going to open my drink before we carry on. I've got a load of other games that I want to get through in this in this stream as well. Uh, so I won't spend too long on this, but I want to get somewhere on it at least. I want to show you at least what a proper level looks like. So... making sure the game was recording properly. <laughs> I should know where to go, I actually played it not long ago anyway. I just started a new, uh, a new save file from the beginning. I haven't played the original version since it came out on the Wii in like 2010 maybe? 2009 or 10? Ah, I fell too far. It was one of the two places on the right, wasn't it? Man, I love this music. This music's so good. There we go, that's where we need to go. What did you say? Toriko has been kidnapped? That's terrible. We have to inform King. 
Not the king, just king. Okay, let's carry on through here. Uh, it was a film about twin gods from a Puerto Rican folklore who got into a fight, which was a metaphor for the hurricanes the island experienced. My friend came up with the film and we had a team of seven. Wow, that sounds, sounds really cool. A very unique premise for a, for a plot. Oh, these enemies aren't dropping any power-ups. I want to get a little bit further into the game so I can show you some of the cool weapons. So that's one of my favourite things about this, is finding all the new weapons in the game. Something's written on the headstone. Here lies the true Mimiga hero, Arthur. Found Arthur's key. Now we know where to go and take that. Yeah, it does sound really interesting. Did you put it online anywhere? Can anyone go and have a look at it? Or was it just a school thing? That's not Arthur's house, is it? Well, let's see what that guy said, because he did run into this assembly hall, so I presume he's in there. There are two keys to Arthur's house. Toriko has one of them, the other is inside the Mega Cemetery. go to his house then. Got to head off, but should have a proper catch up sometime. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Thanks for dropping by anyway. Maybe we can make a sequel to Plunderbus. Here we go, we're in Arthur's house now. And this is where you go to the different... Um, Eventually, this is where you go to the different levels. There we go, we can go to the egg corridor now, which is the first area. But first, I believe there's an extra power up down here, so let's go and pick that up. Also, if you notice at the bottom there, there's the, there's the red flowers, which they said kills the people who live here. So, don't eat the red flowers. I think that's hinting that. Arthur was poisoned, or the doctor was like evil and feeding people red flowers or something. Anyway, let's go. We finally made it to the first level, to the egg corridor. We've got like a cool alien vibe going on here. Ah. Level up. So that's, that's something else for this game. Wow, that didn't last long. You basically collect these little triangles that bounce around. And, as you probably guessed, they power up your weapon. And you can get different weapons as you're going through the game. And then you've got this really interesting story with loads of really unique characters going on at the same time. And kind of a mix of exploration and then level-based areas like this. Like linear levels too. And got another power up. It's just such a well-made game. And this 3D, 3DS port's great too. There you are, monster! You don't scare me. What? You want some of this? Even my big brother has never beaten me. Ouch, you got me! Oh, she didn't put up much of a fight. Who are you? Ack. What's his problem? Oh, uh, that bit up there is really awkward, so this is like a teleporting door that takes you up to the top here. Uh, once you get up to the top anyway, there's a save point. Yeah, that's the other thing, you have to kind of piece together how you got here and like what was going on at the top. So there's a bit of awkward platforming here. Hey, did it first time. Here we go. Got a life capsule. Max life increased by four. Excellent. I was just checking. Yes, I do have a stylus in there, so we can play some touchscreen games as well a bit later. I should have like had a poll in the chat or something so you can vote on what what I should play next. But when we get through this level, I'll. 
uh, pause it there and then we can pick another game to play a bit of. So 15 games I need to capture footage for. Uh, obviously I'm not going to do all that tonight. I'm planning to before Friday at least. So I can actually record and edit the video for this. And then hopefully the week after, if I've got enough time, will be the Hidden Gems version. And I've got some really interesting games to talk about for that Hidden 3DS Gems video. But yeah, let me know in the chat uh, what some of your favourite 3DS games are. There might be some that I don't have. I know there's still a lot on my wish list. So I'll definitely be doing more 3DS stuff in the future as well. <laughs> I know, I the first time I tried to do that platform took me like 20 attempts as well. Uh, and what you have to do here is try and figure out which one of these egg like containers that you need to go to. So there you go. Egg number six. Stasis abnormal. You basically end up going inside it. So let's just check the other ones. And egg number one is up normal as well. Have you ever done any game jams? Uh, yeah, I've done a few. I did a few back at uni many years ago. Um, and I did one maybe four or five years ago with a friend from uni. And that one was a weird game where you play as a spider. And my friend was the programmer and he put a lot of effort into getting the spider's web to work properly, which was really cool. And the idea was you'd go around and you'd sort of capture people and then you'd have to drag them back to the to the spider's web sort of thing. And the only bit that I was in charge of programming was was some water drops that come out of the ceiling, like out of the pipes that were going across the sewers. And I didn't program it right, so they just constantly get faster and faster and faster until it's just like a wall of drops and as soon as you touch it, you die. So that was my experience programming that. Uh, what were the other games on games? There was one I did back at uni called Eye for an Eye. Um, I think the theme was sight or lack of sight or something. Um, and in that one... Shoot, do you guys remember what egg things we needed to look at? It was number six, I think. Number six and number one? Yeah, I think so. So that's number four. On the three. Let's keep going this way. Showing off my power level. Yeah, my cave story skills. It is kind of a weird floaty physics kind of platformer as well. So it is a little bit difficult to do the jumps. And like I said, I didn't manage to do it on the first go before. Oh no, I leveled down. And I leveled straight back up again. A pro at playing games on Twitch. I don't know about that. Although I feel like I do concentrate more when I'm talking, which is really weird. Anyway, we need to get under there and quickly go... Ah, up here! Inside this egg. That took me a while to figure out as well. ID card required to move, remove the shield. Uh, yeah, I'm missing an ID card. So, I think I need to go to the other one. Never done a game jam, but I'd love to do art for one. I know Hollow Knight came from a game jam. Yeah, it did. That's, that's a really good example of a game that came from it. I think, um... Uh, what's it called? The original Surgeon Simulator and stuff like that came from Game Jam as well. And uh, one of the operating system things for the Game Boy came from Game Jam that I did a video on last week too. Uh, my girlfriend did art for a Game Jam with me one year. I forgot about that one. We made a game called Spirited, which was a game about a native Indian. And they would go around and you'd find totem poles and there'd be pictures of animals on the totem poles. 
and then you could sort of transform into that animal. It didn't really get much further than doing the first level and fighting some snakes. And then at the end of that stage, you turn into an eagle and fly off, which was really cool. And I did the programming on that one, which I was quite happy with. And my girlfriend did the artwork. And we had some friends. One of my friends did the music, and the other one just kind of tossed around and did nothing, which was a bit frustrating. Yeah, like Shantae with totem poles. Sure. So, egg number six. And then we got the ID card, and then we have to go back and do the first one. Yeah, I don't think you'd expect a game jam game to actually feel like a complete experience. They're just kind of like proof of concept things that you can then flesh out later on if you wanted to. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you what the eye for an eye one was like, so that was a really weird one. So the idea was that you played as a blind man, because the idea the theme for that year's game jam was lack of sight, I think. Or something like that anyway. And you could basically point at an object and different objects would have like different visibility filters on them. And it was a really interesting game where you'd sort of click around, like a point and click adventure. It was all in 3D. And you'd go through the different objects and like the field of view would be different. And then you'd have to try and figure out which objects you needed to interact with in order to escape from the house. Which was a really unique idea. But I didn't do any of the programming for that one, I just came up with the concept for it. So maybe I'm patting myself on the back a bit there, saying how good of an idea it was. But I think it did fairly well, and it got a good response. Okay, so, insert the ID card. Shield removed, and then we can carry on through the level. Oh, cool, you made some visual novels. I kind of messed around with the idea of making visual novels, but I never really got very far with it. So I think we're getting towards the boss at the end of this level. Ah, there he is. Professor's very important test eggs. Very important. Won't let anyone know. Hopefully I can keep my power up here, because that's going to be really useful to get his health to go down pretty quickly. He's not really putting up much of a fight. Ah, uh, almost. Did oh, I did do it without getting hit. Wow. I really thought I'd got hit then. Pro Twitch gamer skills. Even that sounds a bit like Metroid. Uh, let's see if we can interact with his body. No. Right, and anyway, when we finish this, I'll move on to playing some Kid Icarus, as that is what Twitch says we're playing. So, let's just finish this level off. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed having a quick look at Cave Story 3D, because I was so excited to find this game recently, and I've been really enjoying playing it. And I really wanted to come here and show you guys just how much of a good game it is. Whoa there, I haven't lost yet. I'm going to take it serious now. Huh? I got knocked out by that monster. Did you save me? Yeah. This is none of your business. I can take care of myself. I hate this island and everyone living on it. Oh, this must be egg number zero. We can get off the island with this egg. Egg condition is normal. Awesome. Hmm, a password? Looks like I need a password to hatch this egg. Mate, if my brother was here, he'd fix everything. There's nothing to do here, I guess, I know. The letters on your cap aren't from here. Maybe you're lost. I love games that have this sort of mysterious atmosphere to them. Like, you've ended up somewhere and you don't know what's going on, or you've got to sort of piece together what's happening around you. Right, anyway, maybe we'll end it there. I've already got a save file, so don't worry about that. That's basically the end of the first level. Um, let's check out what the classic mode is. Because I did notice on the title screen it also has classic mode. And it looks like someone's already played this bit. I presume this is just the original cave story. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it's still in 3D. But the graphics look a little different. Maybe that's it. Uh, shame you can't skip the cutscene. 
Let's see what's different about Classic Mode. Blah, 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 blah. I did a few animation. I wasn't going blah, blah, blah to your comment, by the way, Mick. Sorry. Uh, but what is different? The character model is, like, flat. Is that the only difference? It still has 3D. Is it just using the original sprite? Yeah, the bats are flat as well. Maybe the music's different? It's a very subtle difference anyway, whatever it is. It feels the same. Hmm. Yeah, anyway. Classic mode was a bit disappointing. I thought it was actually going to be like the original game on there as well. Anyway, that was Cave Story 3D. Hope you enjoyed that. Now we're going to go and play some Kid Icarus 3D, which is maybe my favourite game on the whole system. So let's move on to this. Has anyone played... Ca I was about to say, has anyone played Cave Story? Has anyone played Kid Icarus 3DS? I was so unbelievably excited when this got announced at E3 2010, I think. Came out in 2012, so 2010 or 2011. But my God, when it came up on the screen and that first trailer showed up and Pit flew in front of the in front of the clouds, I think I actually just screamed at the TV like, "No way, Kid Icarus is back!" Oh my God! Like I legitimately freaked out. Such such a good game as well. Uh, anyway, let's start a new save file. Uh, oh, it's got Sarah's account on there. Retro. Retro break won't fit. Hey, it knows my birthday, eh? Have I not even got a me on here? Oh, I do. There we go. I haven't really used this 3DS much. My normal one is the new 3DS but with the Miku faceplate. And on the back as well, which is really cool. So yeah, that's what I usually play all my games on. This one's just the capture card one. Never played it, but heard it's great. So I've been playing while I wasn't paying attention. Maybe, but yeah. You're going to be blown away with Kid Icarus if you've never played it before. It's just... Before you head out, Pit, let me explain the basics. Oh no, can we skip it? Does Sorry it play well without the stand? Yeah, it plays fine. So basically, you just hold it like that with one hand it's and been too long, Lady use the touch screen to, uh, to aim. Hit, but now it's time to fight. The so you can see on the bottom screen there how I'm moving the reticle around. And then you press the L button to fire. You hold it down to fire, basically. And if you tap it when the enemies are close to you, then you do, um, then you do a melee attack instead. And it kind of starts out like... Um, Kind of starts out like a Star Fox kind of game like this. I love that reference to the NES game on there as well. I love the fact that they talk all the way through as well. It's actually got a really good story if you like pay attention to it as it's going. And these graphics were just mind-blowing at the time. And the fact that it's in 3D as well. Just, man, my mind was just blown playing this. And the music as well. Everything about this is just incredible. It really is. You can tell, maybe I like it a little bit. Yeah, anything Sakurai touches is amazing. I'm glad they actually had the chance to make a proper game like this. I hope he'll do it again. Oh yeah, Kirby's Air Ride too. Although that, that one kind of got a mixed reception a bit. But look at these graphics with the 3DS, they're amazing. So it's not entirely a flying game. Oh yeah, here in this bit as well, which was in the cutscene, was so exciting. Oh yeah, there's loads of stuff to collect in this game as well. So you saw I just picked up that weapon there. There's like all sorts of different things, and there's a whole like smelting system where you can combine different things together. There's so much to it, and there was a great multiplayer mode as well. I'm a bit worried about holding my finger too close to the USB port on the back. 
so I'll try not to touch that. But yeah, this first section is just kind of like the Star Fox. Now they're attacking the town? Oh no. This isn't right! The people need your help. I'd better get you over there. When I first saw this, I thought, like, no way is this running on a handheld. Did you hear that? Did oh yeah, if you if you um, let go of the L button for a while, you can charge up uh, to do a stronger attack as well. Now we get to go down onto the ground and do the actual 3D like, walking around section. Which is also really fun. Now it's time to battle on land. Yeah, we don't need a tutorial. I'll tell you guys how to play. I'm the tutorial. So first things first. Try turning left, Pit. Try turning left. That's a challenge. Good. Oh yeah, Looks you like can double tap. Yeah, it's a piece um, of cake. So but basically everything's like done with a touch screen, so fight ins with a touch screen, move the camera by swiping. I really like um, so aiming like this. It's really fast. I'm on it. Like even looking at the screen up there, I, I can do it. Okay. And if you double tap left or right as well, you can dash like that. And like I said, if you get close enough. A yellow reticle means that you have an item. Pressing the L button will use that item. If you get close enough to an enemy, you can use the swords too. Like that. Just like in Smash Bros. I think you can What's use this? it on there as well. An intensity game. To pass yeah. through these, you need to play at certain intensity or difficulty level. There's loads of different difficulty options. There's like... Uh, there's like a slider, basically. So you got like a hundred different difficulty options depending on how good you are at the game, or how good you think you are. But I'm... Oh man, I've wanted to replay this for a while, so... I might actually carry on playing this off stream. Oh, that's what I was telling you just now. Some of the dialogue's a little bit cheesy. <laughs> It's all part of the game's charm, though. Ah! Where's he gone? Oh, he's been flattened. I thought that was something to, like, pick up or stand on. Ah! I wish the game would get a port or a re-release -re on, like, the Switch. I was really hoping that it would come out on the Wii U, because they could still use the touchscreen. I don't really know whether the game would work that well without it. I know some people complained about the controls, but I find them really intuitive. But I loved playing first-person shooters. On the original DS as well. With this lower difficulty, I don't really think I need to worry about being attacked either. I remember playing the multiplayer mode loads for this. Wow, that was quick. Victory is mine! So yeah, what do you guys think of uh, Kid Icarus Uprising so far? Pretty crazy game. I wish they would have done a Star Fox game like this. Your days of darkness are numbered. Prepare to meet the light! Let's return for now. This was just our first step in defeating Medusa. There we go, level one complete. And then you'll get to see the insane Sakurai extras that this game has. There's so much to it. So there's a treasure hunt. So depending on what objectives you do in the level, you can unlock loads of other things. You've got like this puzzle piece thing here. Uh, you can see it opens up the things around it as well, just like Smash Bros. So you can see what you need to do in order to unlock the other bits. And you can also use this feather to sort of tap away at one that you haven't unlocked. And then, yeah, it's a Sakurai game, so it's got a crazy menu as well. Um, Arms Altar, that's what I was telling you about, where you can you can make new weapons and you can convert them. 
there's loads of different types of weapons as well and there's like this Tetris style thing where you can drag the different blocks on and they all have different um, they all have like different abilities that it gives you so recover instantly in crisis mode so put that on there that one recovers a little bit of health this one turns enemies with low health into idols and they're like another collectible in the game this one you can place a landmine on the floor so kind of like um, Resident Evil 4 or something you can spend ages trying to mix and match with this as well and there's so many different types of weapons I haven't got them on here yet because we've just started obviously um, you can also use hearts that you collect through the game to buy loads of different types of weapons as well you can fuse two together to make new ones there's just so much to this it is kind of overwhelming to begin with and um, you can also put eggs in this in this basket and then you can kind of get, get like little gacha figure things so you shoot them off and they're kind of like the trophies um, but you can also use coins that you collect as well and they go into your idol collection and you can use them to unlock the puzzle pieces as well um, but anyway let's move on to chapter two oh, it's just such a good game yeah anyone who's missed out on this go on ebay right now and pick it up and this this is the difficulty slider I was, I was on about so depending on you know how good you think you are at the game you can trade your hearts in to, to get more out of it at the other end so should we try it on extra spicy let's see if i've still got it saw someone saying the steam get don't come alive for dual screen yeah it, it does doesn't it this weather's nasty yes but your next mission can't wait you must yeah, it's like, finally, people have rediscovered the Wii U, thanks to the Steam Deck. But yeah, let's see whether I can actually get through this now we've got the difficulty a bit. I remember I was obsessed with this game, I actually managed to finish it on the highest difficulty. Oh yeah, even if the enemies get up close on this flying section, you can use your melee attacks as well. I don't know whether I'll be able to with this default gun though, unfortunately. There's one left, so just slash away at them. It's hard to keep up with what they're what they're saying at the same time as all this stuff going on on the screen. Yeah, I I don't know whether Nintendo will ever make a new handheld again because of how well the Switch has done for them. But honestly, the Switch is kind of boring compared to some of their older systems. Like, apart from the fact that it's a hybrid console, it doesn't really have anything unique going for it. Like, the 3DS had so many interesting things that add to the games, like, like using the touch screen, like having the two screens, having the 3D screen, having the backwards compatibility with the original DS. The Switch doesn't have anything like that. So it's kind of sad in a way. The cameras, like the interesting things to do on the menu, like the little unique things that it came with, like Street Pass and Face Raiders and stuff. There was so much unique stuff with the 3DS. It really felt like Nintendo wanted to have fun with the system, but the Switch feels a bit sterile. But for some reason, people seem to like that. I guess it appeals more to the masses. To the normies. Ah! Oh dear. But yeah, I would love to see Nintendo go more experimental here. For sure. Yeah, I think the Wii U put them off. But that was more of a marketing issue than the system being bad, I think. So maybe they got the wrong message. Ah, so much going on. I'm nearly dead. Yeah, you have two bombs that you can use as well. Um, there we go, we've got a little bit of health back. Thank God. I was literally on the cusp of dying then. Maybe I shouldn't try and look at chat at the same time as playing this. Shooting and dodging, shooting and dodging. Years of playing Star Fox and Panzer Dragoon Saga. And what are the games like this? 
space harrier. Well, what about that wall? Don't worry, I'll help you over. Whee. I love how cinematic this game is as well, it's crazy. Nintendo's never made anything like this since. I love how silly Pit is too. Oh my god. Man, these graphics are just crazy for the 3DS. Especially in 3D as well. The humans are taking a beating. They need our help. Normally I'd agree with you, but what is it? Right, what should we play after this anyway? I wanna try and record a few more games tonight. Remember what happens when it runs out? Any suggestions? There's a lot of voice acting in this game, like, literally the whole way through, the whole way through the entire game, there's always, like, some sort of banter going on on the bottom screen. Yeah, Pit is very, very cheesy. But I do enjoy some of the banter, especially between the bosses later on. So this is the Dark Lord's castle. I'll yes. decide after this one. Oh, yeah. to build it after Medusa's resurrection. He's using this castle as a stronghold for underworld monsters. Monsters oh, designed to wreak through. havoc and sow sadness. Are you excited? Yeah. It's like a birthday party where everyone wants to kill me. A birthday party where everyone hole. wants to kill me. At the top of the stairs, there's a door with switches across from it. Switches, huh? That probably means I should hit them. Very perceptive of you, Pit. So snarker. Oh yeah, some of the treasure chests are fake as well, so... That one's not. Health recovery, yay. But yeah, some are mimic chests. Anything else up here? You know what this game kind of feels like? A really well-polished version of Star Fox Assault. It has the same sort of flow to it. It's just obviously a lot, uh, a lot more polished, as I said. Uh, I don't think there was any way I could stop that. Yeah, there we go. The door is unlocked now. The enemy with the big skull guarding the door is a Ganymed. They'll attack and fire at, but they don't do much at all if you don't shoot them. So I suggest using melee attacks or dash shots to take them down. I'm using melee attacks. Maybe because this is extra hard mode. Oh, there we go. Just killed him. I need health. Badly. I'm sensing treasure somewhere to your left. How do you know that? From the heavens, I can see through your laurel crown. The divine you're surrounded. Oh god, I'm really? I'm getting scared. That's amazing. And that's not all I can No! Say. Oh! Can also see what's in your apparently, heart. uh apparently I had some sort of oh. <laughs> shield. That's really something. So you'd better not be thinking about anything. I haven't got any other weapons yet, so this is very difficult. Just kidding. Seriously. Gonna use the default sword and go. I know. I was Where is he? Also kidding. Sure you were. Did I get anything? Oh, there's some more treasure chests. I uh, didn't think I'd be able to do it. Anyway, that is Kid Icarus, an amazing game for the system. Now, what next, what next, what next?
Mm, link between. I don't really want to play a Zelda game because that would just take too long. And unfortunately, because I'm on the original 3DS, I can't really play Resident Evil either because you need two analog sticks. Um, yeah, let's show you guys some of this. Even though you won't really get the 3D effect, it's still a really cool game. So now we're going to play. You'll see it pop up on the screen. Another game I was super impressed with. And one very relevant to the channel. Sega Classics 3D. And if you're interested, there's the box for it. I always thought that was a 2, but it's actually just the fire. It's not Sega Classics 3D 2, there is no first one. It is just Sega Classics 3D. Um, but what you'll notice is the insane attention to detail in this. And a great list of games too. So it's basically just a retro arcade compilation. we get into the game I'll show you some of the really cool features that this has got so here's the list of games we've got Power Drift which of course is an awesome super scalar arcade game we've got Poyo Poyo 2 a great puzzle game and I just need to adjust the filter on here uh, it didn't really make much difference but I'll turn that off anyway it's also got Sonic 1 Galaxy Force, uh, Thunderblade, Fantasy Zone, and Altered Beast. But what is really cool about this, let's start Power Drift. Some of the things you won't be able to pick up on because it's like to do with the 3D effect of the system, so uh, by turning the 3D slider up. Yeah, obviously don't start in a high gear. Thanks, random rabbit. Um, so... Yeah, the 3D is just insane in this. Like, it's really... I don't think you'll be able to tell at all. But... Uh, how can I get that off the screen? Yeah, you probably won't be able to tell at all, but... If you can kind of see that. How the screen splits like that. So, the distance between the two things is, like, how far away things are into the background. And it's, like, really, like... Almost overpowering. So obviously this is just choosing your car and course. If you've ever played the arcade game, this will be familiar, but... Ah, oh, amazing music too. Um, how do you do this again, touch? Oh, okay, so I've got it set up with touch controls. Uh... I want to get to the menu to show you. So there's loads of different options. This is what I wanted to show you. So that's like the standard arcade screen size. You've also got widescreen. You've got a zoomed in one, which is zoomed in for a good reason. So if I resume the game and yeah, I know I'm like way behind where I'm supposed to be. You can see that the screen actually tilts. I don't know how to change time gear. No gear, there we go. Oh, okay, so you use the top part of the touchscreen to go up, and the bottom part of the touchscreen to move down. But the way the screen's tilting is actually mimicking the original arcade cabinet. And you can't see, but if I turn it around to show you, you actually go forward by moving, you, by moving the um, stylus up. This is impossible to do on camera. And then move it left or right to steer. But yeah, maybe maybe it's not a great game to show off on stream. Um, you've also got this, which I thought was really cool. So now you've actually got the proper, the proper arcade cabinet as well. And you can see there, look, as, as I'm turning, the steering wheel turns. So you've got that sort of like really granular control, so if you just want to turn a little bit or if you want to turn all the way, then you move your pen all the way to the side. It sounds really weird, but it works really well, like if I just do it now without holding it backwards. 
you can kind of see how it works. And depends on how far up the screen you are is how much you, you, you accelerate as well. Um, but yeah, it's really cool the fact that like the arcade cabinet tilts as well, just like it would do in real life. And of course, you can you can play it with just normal normal button controls as well. Um, different gears, you've got different options there. Apparently, you need to reset it first, but you can also change the background. You can turn the animation on and off. Uh, so let's reset and try it with, I presume, button two. It's just buttons. Uh, it's still saying touch control, so maybe I can set it up properly. No, I'd need to. I'd need to tweak all the controls. It's still using the buttons, but. Yeah, I just thought that was a really interesting way of porting the arcade game. And it looks really cool as well, the super scalar technology. The fact that it's not actually 3D at all, it's all just made with pixels, was really impressive for the time. Uh, let's go back to the game select, I'll show you some other stuff on here. You can also get to them like this as well, so. And they all have loads of different options. Yeah, I think Sega's used this new art style for a lot of their releases. So this one is just like the original arcade game, but emulated. And of course, Puyo Puyo is a classic. I used to be really good at it, so the idea to get the combos is to um, stack things on top of each other so that the colours don't touch, and then let's see whether I can do it. So, like if I put this green one down here, it's going to drop the blue ones down as well, and I'll get a two combo and shoot that over to the other side. It takes a lot of planning if you want to do it properly. Like, now I want to get a green and yellow one, and I also want to put one more blue one down like one more blue one down there I'm probably explaining this really badly and I've probably messed up now I'm trying to take it too seriously I won anyway let's see what the other options are for this so settings it's basically all the original arcade things, so all the stuff that they would have on their actual arcade board you can do here. So, I don't even know what this means. Margin time? No idea. Um, which direction do you want it to turn? It's got a sound test in there. And of course it's also got... You can't see it, but it's got 3D as well. Which is really cool. And they even made their own like game system to support the 3D of the 3DS specifically. It's got Sonic 1 on here as well, which is also in 3D. Full like stereoscopic 3D. Which looks amazing, but unfortunately, once again, you can't really see it. The downside to streaming a 3DS. But uh, maybe I can and explain how it looks if I do the side by side thing again and if I tilt that so because only one of these is moving that means that everything's going into the distance so the things that don't move like the palm trees they're on like the front layer and then the the sea is like really nicely um, like nicely parallax scrolling into the distance which looks really cool in person. Obviously you can't see it through the capture software. But it just runs great, it's a great port of Sonic. And they released Sonic 2 separately as well. On the eShop. Which unfortunately closed down today, so... 
The only way you can actually get games on the 3DS eShop now is if you link your Switch account to the 3DS and get the, the money off it, off it that way. But unfortunately, you can't actually just transfer money straight onto the 3DS anymore. Which is a big shame. I won't end up playing all the way through Sonic 1, tempting as that might be right now. I've got other stuff to show off. And yeah, it's still recording. Good. Two birds with one stone this stream is, so I'm also recording the gameplay for YouTube as well. And fingers crossed the 3DS videos should do really well, because when I've talked about 3DS and DS in the past, they've quickly become like some of my most popular videos for some reason. People just love listening to and finding out about the 3DS and the DS, which is great. Right, anyway, I'm not going to spend this whole stream playing Sonic as much as I'd like to. Uh, what else? Galaxy Force is another really impressive one. Another into the screen kind of super scalar game. It's kind of like a precursor to um, Kid Icarus in a way, actually. Again, this one's set up for touch control. Let's see if I can remember how to play this one. Starship Command to destroy it. Begin takeoff countdown. Roger. Shield strength maximum. Let's try this one. Again, the 3D is super impressive. Like you can see the way the background's shifting. That's how far back it goes. And I'm actually going to play it in 3D, but why? So, is the touch control actually doing anything? The touch control isn't doing anything on this one. I must have got it set up for buttons instead. But yeah, basically Star Fox before Star Fox was a thing, but made using nothing but sprites which was obviously super impressive for the time. Imagine seeing this in the arcade in the 80s. It'd be like, mind-blowing graphics. Obviously, you couldn't play it in 3D like I am, so... Maybe it's not quite as impressive, but still really cool. I'm not sure what the touch controls do, really. They don't really seem to do anything. And the music is weirdly calm. You still reference my old DS videos? Wow. I need to make some more. I've been thinking about doing some more Hidden Gems ones. I saw someone commented on there the other day saying, Where's part two? So... Oh, it's such a shame you guys can't see this in 3D because... This is crazy impressive considering it's just sprites. It's also kind of difficult to control. Yeah, to you guys it looks flat, but for me playing it on the 3DS, like this tunnel actually goes off into the distance. Which looks amazing. And it would look even better if I had a new 3DS. But unfortunately the capture software is only compatible with the old 3DS that I've got. So that's why I'm using this bright pink one, because that's the only one I could find on eBay. And it cost a lot of money, so I'm going to put it to good use. And oh no, one of my wings is damaged. Playing this kind of makes me wish that they would have ported um, Panzer Dragoon to the 3DS. I think that would have been really good. But you know what Sega's like with Sega Saturn games? They may as well not exist. Uh, which way am I going? Ah, uh, no! I'm not going anywhere. That's something you don't... Oh, I'm dead. That's something that you don't get in Star Fox. You got most of the SMT Persona games before it closed. Still need to get Dragon Quest. Uh, yeah, I've got... Uh, which ones have I got? I've got... Uh, I can't see them now, actually. 
I do have one of them. Let's go on full screen. I'll see what ones I've got. Yeah, this is this is the only SMT game that I've got. It's uh, Devil Survivor Two, Record Breaker. Is that one any good? I remember I picked it up a while ago, but I didn't really get around to playing it much. There you go. It is in there. Some of the other ones have got crazy expensive now. It's just insane the price of some 3DS stuff these days. It's really shot up. Uh, right, what should we play next? Maybe we should just play. A classic Nintendo game. Like a proper a proper Nintendo game. Like if you think about Nintendo, you don't think about Kid Icarus. You don't think about Sega classics. You think about a game that won't read. There we go. Think about Super Mario. You haven't played the Survivor series. If I remember right, it's more of a well, no, it is a turn-based turn-based uh, strategy thing. I don't know. I think this one was a port of a DS game. I remember there was something that felt kind of old about it. Oh, yeah, I haven't got any spot pass stuff on here. Is there a way of changing what game I'm playing while it's live? Yes. Unfortunately, I don't think this updates the actual stream when it's done. But it should, it should say now that I'm playing New Super Mario Bros. And I know some people like to complain about the New Super Mario Bros. games. Oh yeah, look at that. 100% complete. I've got over a million coins. I've got the, uh, the full coin title screen. That just shows how much I've played this game. A ridiculous amount. There we go. All three stars. But shall we delete the save file? My god, I had a bit of a heart attack then. I thought I deleted my main one. Let's start a new game. I remember really loving this one. Devil Survivor isn't as good as the first one. Man, I love these games so much. I'm kind of sad that Nintendo hasn't made a new one for a long time. Hey, Craig. Thanks for joining. You probably joined me at the least interesting moment of the stream. We're just playing Mario now. Definitely not a hidden gem. Oh, well this one's got a really unique story. The princess has been kidnapped. Except this time there's like a billion coins everywhere. I do like this one more than the original DS New Super Mario Bros. game. Hopefully I can show why that is as we get into this. Look at the amount of coins I've got. Ridiculous. So, the new thing about this game, about this version of Mario anyway, I don't think we'll see it. Maybe we won't, we won't see it in this first level. But there's basically blocks that you put on your head and you basically just keep spewing coins out forever. So... Oh my god. I'm supposed to be a Mario expert. What's going on? The whole thing about this game is just like millions of coins everywhere. Anyway. Let's play it how I normally play Mario. Which is not stop for anything. And then get told off if I'm playing it in multiplayer because I'm going too fast. Coins everywhere! That's basically what this game was all about. And yeah, you can do a ground pound and just keep going as well. There it is! There's the coin block. So... Woo. And even more coins. Giant ones. Yeah, if you get over a million coins, the title screen changes. I don't know whether you were in the stream when you saw that. But you basically get a big gold Mario statue to prove that you got a million coins. 
and you also need to 100% complete the game and get all the all the coins and stuff. Hmm. I'll, I'll show you then. It's uh, that only take a second. It took a long time to actually unlock it. Uh, do I need to save? Okay, returning to the title screen. So basically, the title screen usually is just the new Super Mario Bros. bit, but now I've got a gold statue of Mario and loads of coins everywhere. And there was this other mode as well called Coin Rush Mode. Um, basically, it's a challenge. I might play this actually because this is more fun. Would you say it was worth it? Sure, because I get to show it off on here. So you be you basically get to choose one of three packs. So let's try the let's try this one. You go through three different levels, and you have to go through as fast as possible. And there's like way more coins than usual. And the idea is to just try and pick up as many coins as you possibly can across the three levels, and then it all gets added up at the end. And even the like fire flower power up turns enemies into coins now. And like if you kill an enemy, you get coins from it. You can sh throw the Coopers and they shoot coins out of them. Ah, I need somewhere good to throw. Them. Oh, he's turned back into normal Cooper. Right? I'm not doing a very good demo. I keep trying to do the flick thing as well to go a bit further, but that's only on the Wii version. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's probably one of my favourite 2D Mario games, actually. It's got some really great level design, too. I know people like to bash on the new Super Mario Bros. line and say, oh, they're unimaginative, they're, they're plain, the graphics aren't very nice, but I enjoy them. In single player, anyway. I always get told off when I'm playing in multiplayer because I go too fast. Uh, worth it. Maybe not the most exciting level. Maybe I should have just picked the mushroom one. There's a big coin block. Oh, didn't time that very well. Oh yeah, the good thing about this one, the Tanuki suit actually works properly, so you can actually fly again now. So... Oh, I didn't quite make it. Like Mario 3, when the P thing hits the top, then you can fly. I don't think you can take out the ghost, so... Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I didn't realise that was a pit! Whoops. Too bad. So I've still got a few coins added to my total, but... Obviously not as much as if you finish the whole thing. Anyway, let's do a few levels of the normal game. Although I did spend most of my time just playing through the, uh, the coin rush thing. When this game was new. Uh, I don't think I don't think the coins reset. I think they just keep going up. So it's like a uh, just a total that you've collected. I don't think it goes down anyway. I love the fact that these Mario games have the wall jump as well. 
Whenever I go back and play an earlier 2D Mario game, I really miss not having it. Okay, yeah, be careful not to shoot him. This is something new as well. You can shoot the fire fireballs into the pipes. Mega Mushroom! Yeah, this was something new to the new Super Mario Bros. range. Although, I think I've missed the final thing because... See how I destroyed one of those pipes then? If I remember right, one of them. You can actually, uh, you can actually go down. So I probably missed my chance. But I think that had the third point in it. But this level loves to just throw high blocks at you apparently. And loads of extra lives. Yeah, give me them. But I'm not playing it to get all the coins, so I don't really care that I missed that. It does also have the triple jump, so you can do the three jumps and front flip. Like all good Mario games. All good modern ones, anyway. And as you can see, there's certain areas that are blocked off unless you've got a certain amount of big coins too, so... Gives you a reason to revisit some of the earlier stages. But there's not really anything that new or unique for this game. It's just fun. Apparently I missed the, uh, the Tanuki suit. But yeah, this is more like how I usually play Mario games. I suppose we could try flying. Oh, you can also use the tail to break the blocks too. Wow, okay, we missed two. Never mind. That was quick. And you can have an item in reserve as well, so you can tap on the touch screen to pull it out. Kind of like Super Mario World, where it's stored at the top. Okay, first castle. And I'm trying to think what to play next. I wanted to play Resident Evil Revelations, but uh, because I don't have the... Um, what's it called? The C-Stick adapter thing. Pro Controller? It's not called Pro Controller, is it? Uh, Circle Pad Pro, that's it. I don't have the Circle Pad Pro for the original 3DS anymore. Because I didn't think I would ever use an original 3DS again. But here I am. Oh no, I missed the big coin. Good job I don't care. Did you see that originally they misspelled Revelations on the box art? It was rev revelay it on this or something. I don't know. Ah. Uh, I probably can't go anywhere in that pipe anyway. I was trying to be quite there. <clears throat> you played it without the circle pad. I've never played it without, so I've kind of always just presumed it's really bad. Oh, that didn't go anywhere. Fly! to skip out a bit of the level. Ready for the first boss fight? Maybe I'll try playing it for a little bit then, just so you can see how good the graphics are. I was pretty blown away when I first played Revelations. Like, wow, this looks like almost exactly the same as... Wow. Wow. <laughs> I did that in like one second. Yeah, it looks almost the same as like Resi 5 or something on the 360 or PS3. It's crazy. Because when you think of the 3DS, you don't really think of like high quality graphics games and stuff. But there are some games that are really impressive for it. 
Let's do a few more levels of this first, though. Oh, yeah, I remember that the year uh, Okami was the... What was it? It was something in the background, wasn't it? It had that IGN's logo on it. Hey, there you go. There's a, a better example of what that does. I'm not going to bother getting on the coins. Hey. I love how fast Mario can be if you want it to be. Mario number one. Yeah, Dark Souls got nothing on Super Mario 2. Let's go do a water Let's level. Go. The 3DS actually also had a port of Mario Maker, which was really good. Which I've got on the shelf back there. But I was trying to weigh up, do I include Mario Maker or do I include Mario New Super Mario 2? And I thought, because this one's an actual original game rather than a port of the Wii U game, I should probably get some extra credit for that. Oh, secret. But I don't have the right thing for it. Yeah, you probably wouldn't notice the watermark, but it's interesting anyway, like, how did how did they actually screw up that badly that they used an image from, like, a game website? It doesn't make any sense. Like, how does that happen? Are there not, like, marketing people that give you the images to use? It doesn't make any sense. I forgot how easy this game is. I bet there's something up here. Hey, something's happened! And it's doubled up the sound for some reason, but thanks for the follow. I missed what your name was, it's gone off the screen now. Something Tommy? I looked up too late. Let's see. Sansy Tommy. There we go, I saw it there. Thank you! Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. What's your favourite 3DS game? That's what I'll be asking everyone who joins. I'd probably say mine's Kid Icarus, Uprising. There you go, spoiler for my video on Friday. Kid Icarus Uprising. Maybe we can play some Metroid. It's a good time. Although, maybe it's a bit difficult to get into on stream. Oh yeah, here's a better look at the, at the weird coin box head thing for this version of the game. The game that was weirdly obsessed with having coins absolutely everywhere. Oh no! Good job there's a wall jump. Oh. I'm so sad Nintendo hasn't made a new original 2D Mario game. No. Favourite is Bravely Default. Yeah, the OST in that game's insane. I didn't really get that far in it though, I remember I got to a dungeon and got lost somewhere. The graphics are really nice too. Oh, I can just run straight past him. Can I do the same there? No. Ocarina of Time is a classic. Absolutely. Right, that's enough of Mario, apparently. Oh no, I took the card out too fast. I got shouted at. Let's put Mario back in the box. 
Should we see where I am on Bravely Default? If I can find it. Is it there? Oh yeah, it's at the top. I'm oh, sorry. Let's go and get bravely default and see where my save files at. I've grabbed something else I wanted to play too, so maybe we can play a bit of Kirby Planet Robobot. I absolutely love that game. But yeah, let's try Bravely Default, see where I'm at. And you can see how amazing the graphics are. Yeah, Ocarina of Time for the 3DS was just incredible when that came out. And the same with Majora's Mask. I'm going to be including both of them in my top games list. Although, obviously, Link Between Worlds. Link Between Worlds is really good. Oh, no. Have I not got a save file? Oh. Yeah, I'm only five hours in. I really got lost somewhere. Do I have any recollection of what I'm doing? No. But the graphics are nice. And let's go over here apparently. The 3D is really good as well. Like You can't tell, obviously, on stream. I didn't realise that playing it in 2D actually makes it kind of difficult to tell where you can walk and where you can't. Like in 3D you can see that those steps are going off into the distance. Um, anyway, it's saying I need to talk to someone. I thought it was further in than this, but no, apparently I only played it for five hours. <sighs> well, basically this game, this, this game was sort of Square Enix's way of making a new traditional RPG after they made Four Heroes of Light for the DS. So it's kind of like a very traditional Final Fantasy game. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll skip this because I have no idea what I'm doing, but I just wanted to show you guys a bit of what it's like. Because it is one of the best games for the system, like best rated. Chamo... Chamokois? Camokois? Yay, thank you. I don't know why that sound keeps duplicating either. But thanks so much for the follow. But yeah, listen to this music. How good is that? I'll turn it up a bit. So good. It's like way better than it has any right to be. And if we get into a fight as well, the music and fights are really good. Really I'm sure I got further than this. Are we not going to get into a fight? Oh wait, I think you can actually turn fights off in this. There's like... There's a load of different accessibility options. Uh, I don't know where you'd go to... To do that though. Yeah, you can even turn off gain and experience points for some reason. Encounter rate, minus 100%, yeah. So if you want to just walk around and not fight anything, you can put the encounter rate to zero, which is crazy. Or if you want to if you want to grind, you can put it all the way up as well. Change the difficulty whenever. Um, yeah, you can basically tweak it to however you want it. Um, 
But yeah, let me show you what the fighting system's like, because it's got a really interesting battle mechanic too. And hopefully, now we've put the encounter right up, we should bump into someone. Oh yeah, this music as well. So epic. So, I can't quite remember the controls, but you can basically choose to wait an extra turn before you do your attack, and you can build up like four. See how I'm pressing L now, and it's got four? So if you want to, you can use four attacks at once. So, three, four, and if I do that all the way as well. And you can mix and match as well, so you can do four with like different different abilities, or you can save it all up and use Brave instead, which builds your Brave points up. Uh, but yeah, I can't really remember how to play, but I remember it being like a really interesting battle system. So the battle points, you can use them to sort of wait a turn, if I remember right. And now when you press go, everyone's going to, like, do everything all at once. And then, obviously, you have to wait. But yeah, this song's awesome as well. This is this. Fast forward, I can't remember how to change that back. Yeah, Octopath is kind of like a follow up to this in terms of how it plays. But yeah, it's such a fresh like system for a JRPG. I'm not going to include it in my top 15 just because I'm not really that far in, but I just wanted to show you guys what it's like. And yeah, it's just a really, really well made game. And there was a sequel as well that came out a few years after. Which isn't that expensive, and I've been meaning to pick it up. It also came with a special edition, which you can get fairly cheap. But yeah, definitely, like, if you haven't got a 3DS and you want to get a really good game for the system, definitely check out Bravely Default. It's very, very impressive. Um. Yeah, Kirby. Kirby or Metroid. Where is it? Here we go. Let's play some Kirby. Probably one of my favourite Kirby games. If it loads. There it is. Just bought a 3DS a couple of months ago, still discovering what amazing games this console has. Nice content you got. Thanks. Well, yeah, hopefully this will give you a good idea of some of the better games for the system. This is definitely one of the best games on the system. So if you enjoy 2D platformers, this is probably the best example of that. It's such a um, really imaginative game. I haven't quite 100%ed it, apparently. Oh, whoops, I went on the wrong game there. So this this was one of the mini-games. There's a whole load of different mini-games on this, but... As with all good Kirby games. But let's do story mode. So the main gimmick in this is that you can pilot these mech suits. As you can see on the front cover. So it's really fun. It's got some really nice graphics as well. Yeah, for some reason, Square Enix games seem to sort of stabilise at about 20, 30 quid, which I guess is about $40 converted. There is um, a really cool looking special edition as well, which I saw in Kex earlier, I was kind of tempted to pick it up. And 
this cutscene's playing out, I'll see where I can find it. Brave the Second End Layer Deluxe Collector's Edition. So it's 42 quid. Let's see what comes in it. Seeing the 3DS left behind hurts. True, but at the same time, like, Nintendo needs to move on eventually, I suppose. So, you probably can't see that, but it comes with a soundtrack, a figure, and a deluxe art book as well, so maybe I'll pick that up. It looks like a nice little set there, if you can see that. Uh, no, Bravely Default 2 was the one that came out on the Switch. There was also another one, confusingly called Bravely Second, which came out on the DS. For some reason. I did get Bravely Second as well on the Switch. Um, but again, I only played it for about five hours. But from what I played, it seems really good. Oh yeah, I forgot as well. This is one of the only 3DS games that plays in 60 frames a second, too. Like, uh... You, you really need to catch up. This Kirby game's amazing. It's definitely one of my favourites in the whole series. Hopefully these early levels do it justice. It may look really simple. Ah. Oh yeah, another thing, because it's the 3DS obviously, it takes the 3D effect into account as well, with things going into like the foreground and background, which is really fun. So again, you guys can't see this, but I've got the 3D turned on, and you can see into the background of the levels, which is really cool. But this just looks like a tutorial stage. I'll show you the ropes. Although I don't really think Kirby needs a tutorial. I, I only found this out like after I nearly finished the game, but if you quickly move left and right, you can charge this power up and then shoot a blast instead of just doing that. So if you quickly move left and right like that, you can do a cool little charged up attack. And there's, lo there's loads of different stickers to collect as well, so they um, unlock things like little keyring things, basically. I was really happy as well that they kind of brought back some of the other things that the, the moves can do in this game as well, like angling the cutter attack, stuff like that. But hopefully um, this tutorial level can have some more interesting abilities. And I can actually show you what the mechs are like as well, because it's really fun. Yeah, it's kind of more like Superstar. It's got the same sort of movesets. Right, see how you can aim there, or you can aim up, like a boomerang. And it's just really fast and fun, and got a really cool soundtrack to it. And it goes really crazy towards the end of the game. It's in a level design, so it's really in inventive. So you guys can't see there, but this is going into the foreground and background. Uh, no, this isn't Triple Deluxe, this one's RoboBot, so the sequel to Triple Deluxe, which I think is the better game. So that's basically saying, that will go down onto the bottom screen and then you can tap it. Should we get another power? Oh, I forgot, if you eat both of them, they'll give you back the one in the way, not the new one. Kirby Superstar is my favourite out of all the Kirby games. Oh my god, look at Wispy Woods! Crazy robotic Wispy Woods. I saw a funny meme on Twitter the other day. If you've been keeping up with Sonic Frontiers, you'll know that they're reusing some of the level design. It's a bit loud, I can see it a little bit. 
yeah, they're reusing some of the level design. Look at this, first boss fight for Wispy Woods, this is insane. Um, but yeah, I was... Basically it was, like, Sonic fans getting upset that the level designs are reused, and then Kirby fans, Oh my god, it's that tree again! Like, being really excited every time Wispy Woods shows up. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, that's crazy. If you've ever played any other Kirby games, you'll know that Wispy Woods usually just stands there and throws apples at you. So, that definitely gives you a good idea of what this game is actually like. Like, it turns everything up to 11. Oh yeah, you wouldn't have been able to tell that that was in front of the 3D arms, huh? So again, see the way the background's tilting as I'm adjusting the slider? That's the 3D effect in this game. So I'm really glad that a late game like, had the 3D effect. That basically just means that you can get to the boss for the area. I need to play more of Kirby's uh, Forgotten... Kirby in the Forgotten World, is it? The new one that just came out on the Switch. Yay, number one. Just like every good Kirby game, you get a little mini-game at the end of the stage, too. And the dance, of course. Except everything's a little bit more futuristic and space-themed in this one. Which is really cool. And then, yeah, you get the, like, gacha-style thing that every game seems to want to do these days. So, let's do a few levels on this, and then... Uh, what else have we got here? Shantae, maybe? Has anyone played Shantae before? Another game that really uh, makes good use of the 3D effect. <laughs> but yeah, let's do a few more levels on Kirby first. And if you've played Kirby's Star Allies on the Switch, this game's a million times better than that one. Yeah, Pirate's Curse is probably my favourite Shanto game. It's just so well designed. And again, the uh, the 3D on the 3DS really, really adds a lot to the game that you won't get on anything else. I'm not doing very good hitting that. Forgotten Land, that's it, not Forgotten World. I think I was thinking of... Um, Jurassic Park. Very different. I love all the remixes of the music in this as well. Yeah, the sword, I like the sword power. And yeah, like Superstar, they've kept all the different moves. So you got the down thrust, you've got the spin. Well, I think the spin's new actually. You've got an up attack too. And you've, you've of course got the multiple slashes thing. Henry Redcat, thank you for the follow. Wow, I'm getting a lot of followers tonight. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I think I'm nearly on 200 now, right? Uh, I don't know how to tell. I think I'm approaching 200 anyway. Apparently something happens when I get to 200 followers, but I don't know what it is yet. Oh yeah, just like Kirby Superstar as well, you can also press the L and R buttons to do the, the block. Let's see, do a stab. Yes, now we can take over the robot suit. So, this is what's so good about this game. So... Do we need to eat it? Yeah, there we go. That was a bit delayed. Yeah, hi, thanks for joining. Here we go. This is a really cool thing about this. So yeah, Kirby Mech! So fun. And you can get different types of mechs by absorbing the enemies as well. Look at that! What a cool idea for a game. I just love it, it's so unique. You're a great creator, love the channel. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I do my best. 
I do put a lot of time and effort into it, so I'm glad it is paying off. Die, one of these. Yeah, one up. That might make a nice sound effect for Twitch, actually. That Kirby one up sound. What's that saying? Press X. Uh, if you want to change abilities. Let's see what this one does. Cool, that one sounds like shockwave sound. Oh, what a cool game though. I love this game so much. There's obviously a lot more to it than this as well, like later on in the game. There's some really cool levels that take advantage of having the mechs and swapping between them and stuff. It's just maybe the best Kirby game? Maybe the second best after Superstar. Or Fun Pack, should I say. For us in the UK. Oh, you have to like turn it like a bolt. That's cool. Oh yeah, I was gonna see how many followers I've got there. 197, I need three more. Hey, anyone who's watching that hasn't followed, go ahead and drop me a follow. I'm nearly there. Something happens at 200. There's everyone who's watching already following. Turn that the other way. Oh, this is another really cool thing about this, about this game. The way the foreground and background interact with each other. It's so cool, especially in 3D. So that one you just turn completely until it collapses. Yeah, I'm going to turn that curly one of those into something on Twitch. Okay. Park the mech up and go through the long pipe, Mario style. Got the rock ability. I think, oh yeah, I was about to say, I think like in... In some of the other Kirby games, you can get different designs as well. So there was a Mario block. That one's DDD. That one's his friends from Dreamland 3. Loads of cool references. I think you can get other Nintendo references as well, which is fun. There's another mech suit there. Let's jump in there. Let's see what sword mech is. Whoa! I love the way the environment's interactive too, like that. Just such good level design, but like the whole way through this game. Playing it again now is just... Ah, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have done that. Lost the treasure there. So... Oh no, lost myself as well. Damn it. Okay, we can try that again. Let's try that again. Pretend that didn't happen. It. I don't know, maybe it's not just there. There it is. That's a funny statue, look at that one. Muscle man. Let's go back this way, see if destroying them ones did anything. No, not really. I was hoping I would find something hidden behind them. Hey, what are you doing? There's a fly in here as well, which is annoying. Wow, that's a cool attack, I didn't mean to do that. Hey, a new follower! Silent Stream, good username. That means I need two more. Two more followers. Ah, I did it again! Why did I do that again? Damn it. I missed the treasure chest twice then. I was not paying attention. I got too excited about having a follower. Oh, I thought that would work. You actually have to... Okay, you actually have to spin around and Ah, oh, that's quite as well. 
such inventive levels. They, they just get better and better as well throughout the game. But yeah, hopefully you can tell why I enjoy this game so much. Two different paths there. Really? The mech can't get through that? There must be something I'm missing. Let's try going back to it. Pay attention! I have to pay attention to you guys too! That's my excuse. That's how you do it. Cool. I'm go through that fight. Oh yeah, and just like every other Kirby game, the sword can slash through at the um, at the wires. That was a little bit pointless. But we got to go through this door anyway. Ah, right, I see. Let's try that again. I need to go through this side. And we got the boss door key. Apparently we're missing one. Oh, I didn't mean to go back in. I was trying to attack up then. I love the way you turn that. And there's a finish. So what do you guys think of this game so far? I think it's definitely one of the better Kirby games. Maybe not the best. I would always put Fun Pack as the best one. And then... I'm not sure what other ones I would put really high up on the list. I've been meaning to do a full Kirby retrospective at some point, because there's only one more game that I need and then I've got all of them. It just so happens that the last one I need is like a Japan-only game that costs like 300 quid. <laughs> it's the Japanese version of um, Kirby's Star Stacker for the Super Famicom. And it came out in like 1998. But for the original SNES, not the N64. I really like Dreamland 3 as well. Never getting that anytime soon. Uh, maybe next time I go to Japan, I'll save up. If you have a Kirby Amiibo, you can inhale it to get a copy of it. I do have one, but I don't think it's in here. I don't think I've got any Amiibos in here. I have some of these older ones, that's right. No, I saw it in Akihabara when I was in Japan in 2020. I was like, I really want it. I just didn't have that much money to spend on one game. I spent a lot more than that on like a hundred games. But I really want to get it at some point because I haven't seen anyone do a video where they've actually shown every Kirby game. Like, I've seen videos about the Kirby series and they've mentioned all the games. But I've never seen one... Oh yeah, this is the new power-up. The Doctor power-up. Kind of feels like Smash in a way. Like, the fact that you've got different abilities depending on the direction. Uh, we took an extra suitcase, that's how I packed everything up. Although next time I'm thinking about... Ah! I'm thinking about shipping some stuff back home. Because there's some bigger things that I want. So it's some Japanese consoles and computers. And it might be easier to actually get it posted. I know some people have done that before. And I saw that Japan is slowly starting to open back up again, so maybe there is a chance. Maybe by next year? Fingers crossed.
This is kind of a time level compared to the other one. Up for the fire power up. Okay, I think the level's about to get less time because there's a mech right there. There we go. I love the fire one. Oh yeah, I'm jumping up. Yeah, but you're going to America soon, so you've got that to look forward to. And you can tease me with all the burgers that you can get from there. Secrets. Whoa! I don't. I hope there's a way to get back. Yeah, I didn't want to do the whole level again. Going to LA. Oh, we have two weeks. I was going to say it's. Mid-September, isn't it? I bet you're really excited for that. Finally, because wasn't it wasn't it supposed to happen last year? Um, uh, how do I get off? I'd be scared to drive in America because it's the wrong side of the road. I think I'd get really confused. About two years in the making, yeah. Finally you get to go there, enjoy it. I got blasted out the window. Oh. Check out Universal Studios. Yeah, that'd be cool. I went to the Universal Studios in Osaka in Japan. That was really cool. Obviously, I want to go back there. Now they've got the Nintendo area, Nintendo Land. I think America's getting the Nintendo section as well, but I don't know whether it's there yet or not. Screen. Huh, okay. That's a more fun way of destroying the enemy. I didn't even notice that in the first one. He's getting mad. I love how over the top the boss fights are. Look at this. Giga Vault. Ah. Oh, I can just stand on it and hear it's a sand on it. I thought I was going to be able to go up onto his head. Smash. That's something I've got on my list as well as the 3DS version of Smash. So maybe we can check that out. Although I hate playing Smash on the 3DS because the controls just go. Okay, now we're gonna get to attack his head, right? Yeah. Look how insane this looks. How is this a Kirby game? This is like, more like Bayonetta or something. Yeah. 
obviously a lot easier. I didn't know there was a Simpsons ride. What's that like? I can't really imagine how a ride based on The Simpsons would work. Number two again. Right, what else have I got on the table? Some of these games are kind of games I really enjoy, but probably not games that are great on stream, like Kingdom Hearts. I'm going to include that in the collection, in the video, but um, yeah, it might be a bit difficult to get into on stream, so I'll leave that one for recording on my own. Um, yeah, let's have a look at Shantae. I did say I was going to show you guys that. It's the old Back to the Future ride, just with the theme changed. Oh, do you just sort of like fly around Springfield then? I went on a really cool Spider-Man one in Universal, in Japan, that was really cool. Or in 3D and you're sort of sitting in this car and you're flying down like through the city skyline and like the bad guys jump onto the front of the car and it's like water flying into your face as they're attacking you and stuff. It was really cool. Maybe I'll leave Shantae for a little bit because we've played a few platform platformers already. I'll give Resident Evil a go. Yeah, that's why I'm not doing Kingdom Hearts on stream, because it won't make any sense. Let's try Resident Evil. Changing up themes a bit, we've had too many kid-friendly games. Let me show you what Resident Evil for the 3DS is like. There's actually two. There's also um, a Mercenaries game as well, which is actually really good too. Do I have a save on here? The 3DS is a bit weird. Like sometimes, sometimes the save files are on the cartridge. Sometimes the save files, uh, sometimes the save files are on the system. You can never really tell. <laughs> Shall I tell Sarah I'm playing Rosie? Hey, look! Speaking of Sarah, she only played that for 20 minutes. I don't believe that. I don't believe I only played it for four hours either. I'll be kind and delete my one. I'm not called Nick anyway, I'm called Retro Break. Or just Retro Bree, okay. I would like to use the Circle Pad Pro, but I don't have one. Uh, so don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing it with the 3D on, but you guys can't see. But if you look at the screen, you can see it kind of it looks terrible on the camera, but it doesn't look terrible in real life. Uh, no, I can't bother to do Street Pass on this. I've never taken this one anywhere. Revelations. Thinking of streaming the whole Resi games after you come back, right from the beginning. Go for it. Have you have you played any of them before? No way, Revelations was the first one you played. That's a really weird starting point. Starting with a spin-off. Not even on the home console. Oh yeah, you got the Humble Bundle. But check these graphics out, they're incredible. And this is all real-time and in 3D as well. Obviously you can't really tell on there. But you can kind of tell if I do that. The distance between things. Only Resi 4 VR. Oh yeah. I need to go back to that. I stopped playing it for some reason. I was really enjoying it. Incredible. The Queen's I want to do some Beat Saber streams, but this I'm worried because be of because the music it would get claimed. Let's find a boarding point. Did the Humble Bundle have Revelations on? Ha <laughs> ha. 
It is a really good entry in the series. A lot of people kind of saw this as a return to form for the series after how action focused it went with, with five. And then this it's one kind of went back to its horror roots. Off the radar. It was kind of weird that it came out in the 3DS because it does feel like a console game. Right here on and the ship. it obviously did come out on consoles after. And I played it again on the Wii U. The Wii U version is really good actually because it still has all of the DS features. Whereas some of the other ones. Okay, wow, this already feels really wrong, not having the second, the second analog stick. How do you actually aim? Okay, you can just look around like that. This is going to be difficult playing it without proper aim, but I'll try for a bit anyway. A lot of the time spent in this game if I remember right, is actually scanning it's been things too. For a while. Um, don't worry, it's not all this dark. No signs of life, but I feel like something's here. Hey, there's something. What happened? I don't think we're alone. But the atmosphere in this, for for a handheld game, is really impressive. Ah, uh, the zombies have moved a bit slower. That's good. I was thinking, like, you won't be able to... You can't move... You can't aim without going into this first-person view, which... If you've got the circle pad, you can kind of play it more... Like, more like a regular third-person resi game. But wow, yeah. Playing this with headphones on as well, for me, this really adds to the atmosphere of it. But yeah, I'm sure you can tell that for a Nintendo handheld at the time, like 10 years ago, this was super impressive. It's actually a bit scary and not from the circle pad because you can't look around the corners. to shoot the rats. Oh yeah, I remember I took a picture of that for my friend Trishel. I was like, hey, you got a vending machine named after you. Uh, where are we going? I love having the map on the bottom screen. Yeah, the graphics are really impressive. It doesn't really look that different to, uh, to Resi 5. And the fact that it's in stereo Parker, stereoscopic 3D here. as well is super sure, impressive. No and obviously you're seeing it bigger on the PC screen, so it looks even nicer in person. When did this come out? 2013 or something? Uh, 2012, yeah, so I got something. 10 years ago. I think it's a gun. Now what? Give me a sec. I really enjoy the story in this one, and the way it splits it up into different chapters too is really good. Especially for a handheld so game, like it's, it's easy to jump in and out of. I was... I was... 20. I was in my second year of uni. Ah, oh, I can't remember how to use my... knife. 
Oh, I hate these enemies. Look at the way they move, it's so weird. Oh my god, without the circle pad, this is a lot more difficult. Okay, I think he's dead. I was aiming at his crotch then. He's dead. This explains our missing crew. This is not good. Where are you, Chris? Resident Evil. I can't do that voice. Resident Evil. Episode 1. So that's kind of how this game is structured. It's structured into different episodes and they all have their own little recap section at the start. It's like, previously on Resident Evil Revelations. Like a TV series sort of thing. Here you go. Yeah, it's like a news report. This, this is about the city that they blew up. Coast was the site of one of the world's greatest structures. It took a full 11 years to finish constructing the world's first Yeah, there was a big jump in quality between the DS and the 3DS. Maybe not in terms of games, metropolis, but in terms of massive solar graphics, energy definitely. matrix and equipped with the latest green technologies. Never before had solar energy been used to supply power to an entire city. But in 2004, Veltro, a terrorist group opposing the city's development, launched a bioterrorist attack. They not only released a virus, but also several creatures, known as bioorganic weapons, further complicating the situation. Uh, did this anyone see that the new the Resident Evil the TV has series has been cancelled already? I thought that was funny. The they can FBC, never get it right, can they? The world's leading counter bioterror organization, operating under the auspices of the U.S., was called in to direct efforts to contain yeah, the attack. Change the name of the game. It still says I'm playing Mario. The BSAA, a counter bioterror NGO, which operates independently of the interests of any one country, went in as observers to assist the FBC. Realizing the need for immediate and decisive action, Supreme Local Headquarters issued the order to use the city's solar energy matrix on Resident itself. Revelations isn't in the game list. Media outlets around the world began to refer to the incident as the Terra Grigia Panic. Following the incident, the FBC announced it has successfully disbanded the terrorist group called Veltro. Oh, there it is. It is now 2005, and a sense okay, of calm and security anymore. is finally returning to the people. But, as you can see, the lost city of Terra Grigia remains inaccessible, a silent and potent symbol of the threat that bioterror poses for people around the world. No, I haven't played Tormented Souls yet. It looks good, though. I do enjoy those sort of survival horror games. There was a really good one. Um, there was a, there was a really good one that I played. Sorry, I just had a DM on Twitch. I'll come back to that. Ah, there you two are. There was a really good survival horror game that I played on the original Xbox back at uni. Well, my doctor told me I need I can't remember what it was called, but it was um, it was kind of like Revelations, where you were set on a it was set on a boat at sea, like during a storm. Um, God, what was it called? It was really impressive. It was kind of like a Resident Evil game. Storm. Anyone who knows what happened here is going to put two and two together. That's why I've sent the BSA into investigation. Cold Fear. Yes, I knew what I was on about. Cold Fear for the original Xbox. Something. It was really good. Is that its name? You didn't bother to read the manual, did you? No, uh, I brought it with me. Oh, apparently had unfavorable so reviews at the time. You're compared to Resident Evil. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> there was a game I didn't enjoy as well. There was like a a game that started out as a um, port or sort of remake of Resident Evil 2 by some fans. And then they turned it into their... Yeah, skip through all that. They turned it into a... Um, Oh, that's how you can move the camera. You can use a touch screen. Cool. Yeah, they turned it into their own game, but it wasn't very good at all. 
which was really disappointing because we pre-ordered it ah, to get it on day one. Mess. Oh, they're rotted to hell. Yeah. How do I get the? Ah, oh, that's it. Let's kind of. You spend a lot of time doing this. The Genesis requires a decent sample size to get an accurate reading. Scan the carcasses on the beach and send me your data. I'm getting something. And if you scan 100% of the stuff in the area, you can get like an extra item. So get some extra ammo or some extra health upgrades. Kind of like Metroid Prime in a way. It moved. And careful, you two. Not only know yeah, just like virus just like Metroid as well. Sometimes you have to scan things while they're still alive. Uh, is it dead? No. Oh my god, come on. Now it's dead. You're about halfway through village now and really enjoying it. That's good. I think I'm about halfway through Village as well, and then so we had to the pack our PS5 outfit? up, so I haven't played it since. To be more but it is back now, so... I, see you two are okay. I would say that would be a reason for me to start using it again, to start playing it again. But um, I want to wait for the VR version for PSVR 2 now. Because I played through Resi 7 in VR, and that was really cool. That smell must have ruptured from gas. And 4 in VR is really good as well. So I want to wait and play 8 in VR, which I think will be a really cool way to play it. Oh, that's how you swap to the knife. Or just use the touch screen. Is there anything in there? Looks like someone already raided the place. Lady Demetrask in VR. I'll be lying on the floor for that. <laughs> Imagine the amount of memes when the VR version comes out. It's going to be unbearable. Hmm. We need more samples to run an analysis. Give me a few more. Imagine the mods as well. Although I don't think the PC version is getting there. VR support, unfortunately. I think it's a PlayStation exclusive thing. Nearly done. Sometimes bits like this in the game can get a little bit tedious. There we go, 100%. Now what? I've collected enough samples. Good. Get them to me ASAP. Where are you? Back on the other side. Yeah, if that doesn't sell PSVR 2, then nothing will. Hurry up and neutralize them. Yeah, give me a better weapon if you want me to take all these out. With just a handgun. God, they take so many shots. Okay, it's gone. I don't even think you get anything for it. No. Finally, some peace and quiet. All in a day's work for you two, eh? All right, enough chit chat. Get that sample data to me. I've got it. Take it off me. There you are. Nice work. No doubt about it. These corpses show signs It feels weird playing infection. a game and looking down the whole time. You guys are probably no just looking at the top the of my head. Well, we did all we can. Now, we wait for the results to come back from HQ. Oh, yeah. Resi 4, for some reason, is only on the Quest 2. I don't know why. Yeah. Apparently, you can hack it and put it on the Quest uh -huh. 1. So it does work. What? I don't know why they made it yes, an exclusive. I'll take it from here. But yeah, have a look online. There is a way to get it to work on the first gen. Starting now. Huh? And in some ways it's better on the first gen as well because it has an OLED screen. 
Yeah. Jill, Just Parker. the Zuck being, you two being are still on the case. What happened? We lost contact with Chris and Jessica. When? That's oh. absolutely the reason. We're not certain. I've sent them. Oh yeah, have a look online. You can you can terminals. hack this the first one. You have to like sideload it or something. The signal was lost over the ocean. Did he actually pay for it, or did it not let you get that far? But judging from their position, they must be. Because that'd be really bad if they actually make you buy it and then you find out. I'll go back to HQ. Take charge of the search and rescue. You two will be my eyes out there. Yes, sir. You know what I'm gonna play next and we can end the stream with classic Mario Kart. No, he didn't pay for it. That's good. Yeah, honestly, I haven't used my Rift 2 in a while. I downloaded a really cool game for it as well. Well, two really cool games, and I was really enjoying them. And then I think I went away on holiday and I haven't touched it since. And then it was too hot. That was the other reason I didn't play it. These things got to Chris and Jessica. Yeah. I I've only just been able to start playing the, hey, the Valve Index again. No one's saying Chris is dead. <clears throat> uh, right. One of the games was City Skylines already. VR. I think it's just called Cities VR, but it was really good. Like you're floating from above and you can plan out all the different zones for the city and draw the roads in and stuff. And then you can sort of zoom in that? and speed it up and slow it down and lock? see what people are doing. I'll check it out. So I was really enjoying playing okay. that. I'll see what I can find here. Um, Copy that. And I'll the other one was a game called Gadgeteer, which is like a puzzle game where you have to build like Rube Goldberg like contraptions to get this marble to go to the end of the course. And I was really enjoying. I think I'm going to end Resident Evil there because uh, it's a story game and it's quite different to the PC version actually. Obviously, it's not as detailed. Uh, right, yeah, Mario Kart. Let's let's play some Mario Kart. A 3DS classic. Oh yeah, I'm playing Metroid Prime in VR on PC. That was really cool. Although there's a few weird glitches, like the cutscenes look really strange because the camera sort of stays in place, and you kind of fly through some of the scenery a bit. But when you're actually in the game, it's really good. Ah, I didn't expect to hear Donkey Kong. Let's see, is this my save file? Yeah, look at that, 100% complete, of course. Sure, let's be Yoshi. Apparently that's what I... Yeah, let's do something with a bit more speed. I haven't played this version of Mario Kart in a long time. Uh, right, which... Set of courses, shall we do? Should we do this one and end with Rainbow Road? Although it's still kind of early, it's only 10 o'clock. Maybe I'll do one more game after this. I want to try some more VR mods for PC. I wonder if there's one for F Zero. That would be really cool. Okay. It's been a while since I've played this Mario Kart. Oh, I forgot how good the 3D, the 3D effect is. Right. It's so sad that Nintendo doesn't do 3D anymore. I really did enjoy it. Oh, how did that miss me? You know what else is weird? Going over the jumps and not doing trip, and not doing like flips. As you're going over them. Okay. You still do a flip if you're doing the fire mode. I still don't completely trust myself with the with the 3D controls. I know, no one does 3D anymore. Uh, people say it was a gimmick, but whenever the option is there, I can always use it. It does add a lot, especially to racing games. Like being able to judge the distance ahead of you for corners. 
and we're just gonna end up carrying the shell for the whole race. I forgot how easy this Mario Kart is. Where is everyone? Land in the water a bit to clear off the end. I'm try and take the shortcut. A nice little break at the end. The gimmick to Soul Jump. 3D TV is where I guess. But how do you judge what's a gimmick and what's actual progress worth investing in? People said 4K is a gimmick and now I can't go back to 1080p. I bet people said smartphones were a gimmick. Wow, that was too easy. You don't. I guess it's just whatever catches on with the... Uh, whatever catches on with the population. Eleven K TVs have the natural three D effect. I remember at one point there was a big thing like every CES they would talk about three D without glasses. Yeah, VR's kind of overtaken three D. I'm kind of sad that three D has sort of died away in cinemas because I used to enjoy that. But now the films aren't really made for 3D, so even if you watch a film in 3D, it doesn't really have the same effect as they used to, because they're just converted. I don't know. Oh yeah, IMAX does 3D stuff. Dell's got a 16k monitor. That's insane. There must have become a point where you can't even tell the difference like between 8 and 16k. Is it really worth the extra processing power to push that many pixels? In the future, we'll look back and think, ah, 16k, that's tiny. Ah. Oh no. This is what I get for complaining the last one was too easy. No! Can't snake on this game either, so I can't cheat my way back to first place. Ah, oh, that's not fair, the banana stopped up. I'm gonna stay behind. Damn it! I shouldn't have stayed behind that guys. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> it's my kids 3D, yeah, I saw that as a kid too. I can't remember what the first film I saw in 3D was, so I don't think it was one Obviously I went to see um, Avatar when that came out in 3D. In proper 3D, not red and blue. Oh, really? As soon as I get back into first, the blue shell rears its ugly head. Am I going to end up in third? Maybe. It finishes just around the... Oh god, that was close. Take the inside line. I end in second. Yeah, not bad. What was the first film I ever saw in 3D? I don't know. <laughs> I don't like the idea of Shrek having smells. That doesn't sound very good. Come and sit in the cinema, it smells like a swamp. Oh dear. I 
I tried the D-Max thing in the cinema once, that was a weird experience. That's the one where like the chair shakes and you've got like wind coming from in front of you and stuff. It was pretty fun though, we went to see a film about a tornado, so we, the seat was like constantly bouncing up and down. Ah! Man, the game really heard me complaining that it was too easy. Okay, Donkey Kong. Wow, the red shell chose not to target him. Some of the smells were pretty bad. That sounds really funny though. I can't really think of a film that would smell nice. Like, I never really understood. People thought for a while, like, yeah, a TV you can smell is going to be the next big thing. Like, okay, well, what about if there's a smell you don't like and then you're just stuck with it in the room? And then there was Japan that was making the screens that you can lick and taste them. That was a great idea, especially as they announced it during the pandemic. They are true gimmicks. Like it's at least 3D is kind of something cool, but taste of the screen, I don't know. Or smell in the screen. Well, like how curved TVs have been for a while. I never understood the point of that for a TV screen. Uh, for a computer monitor, I can't get it. But not really for TV. Because anyone else who's sitting there that's not right in the centre won't really get to see it properly. Yeah, I'm back in first. Yeah, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's the next evolution in TV technology. Grab a giant chocolate bar. Bum, 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 bum. Why has Nintendo not made a new Mario Kart game? Why are we still on Mario Kart 8, like nine years after it came out? Yay, Rainbow Road. No, watch me fall off the track. Anyway, this, this Rainbow Road is kind of a weird one. It's all just one long track. It goes around different planets. Uh, oh, come on. I didn't fall off with my own accord then. Ah, where am I going? That's not right. Oh, oh god, good job. They had a side there. I always thought this was a really cool idea for a level. The fact that it's not just on the rainbow, you're actually going across planets too. Cool design. And you get to go on the moon a bit later on as well. Or if you fall off this, you'll be here. Yeah, we stayed on the right to the end. And you get to jump over the craters on the moon with low gravity. A really fun stage. But I do wish it was laps instead of one big one. 
because I would like to go around this three times. It would be a really good finish. Mm. Ah! What? What's going on? Why am I facing backwards? Oh no. I take it back, I hate this level. Oh, and I didn't even fly then, so I missed out on all that. Ah! Oh god, how did I survive that? Wow, that was lucky actually. I can't believe I ended up going backwards there though. Take the inside line. Yes, and if that hits first place. God, he's too far ahead. No, it hit him after he finished. Damn it. Second isn't too bad. Actually quite like Yeah, I've got I've got a curved computer monitor. I like having a curved monitor. But I don't understand having a curved TV screen, really. Yeah, it's probably due to the bad viewing angles with the panels, rather than the curvedness of it. Yay! Anyway, here we go. That was Mario Kart 7. What time is it? I think I might end it here because the rest of the games I've got uh, to go through are more like story based games. So thanks everyone who joined me for the past nearly three hours now. I really enjoyed playing through some 3DS games and hopefully you enjoyed watching as well. Uh, definitely check out my video on Friday. Hopefully on Friday anyway. And I've got my background all nicely set out there. So I'm going to go ahead and plan what games I actually want to show off in those videos now. So thanks everyone for coming. And I'll be streaming again soon. So press follow and do all that good stuff that you have to do over on Twitch. But yeah, thanks everyone. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.